I want to watch Meta Goblin's video also talking about whether or not his top five worries have come true for Wrath Classic. Let's see what these are. All right, guys, you may not remember, but I made a video eight months talking about some uh -oh. of the things I'm quite worried about uh -oh. when it comes to the Wrath of Lich King release. And today we're going to look back at that video and review whether they actually came true or not. Remember guys, this is just the opinions of some random nerd on the internet really isn't gonna hurt anyone okay. and you shouldn't take it too seriously. That's okay. Many different MMO players have different opinions and that's what makes MMOs so interesting and fun to play, the diversity of different people that you end up playing the game with and having discussions with. <clears throat> By the way guys, I just recently made a cheeky gold making guide where you can make 500 gold per day very easily, Whoa. in a very short space of time, by just doing very, very simple auction house flips. Now, if you want to check that out, all nice. you do is subscribe to the channel, and the video will be on my channel page. But anyway, let's move on. So, my first concern in this video was gear score. And gear score, rather unfortunately... I gotta say, bro, I have no problem at all with gear score. Gear score would not make sense in vanilla or TBC, but in Wrath, I'm totally fine with gear score. Gear score is a pretty good approximation of how good your gear is. And it obviously does not equal skill, of course, but I would rather have a bad... Okay, if, I, if I'm going to have a bad player in my group, I'd rather the bad player have good gear than bad gear. Because even though they're bad, they'll do more damage just necessarily because they have better gear than otherwise. So, like, yeah, like, yeah it's kind of a way to hedge your bets a little bit, right? It has returned with a vengeance, or even at a point where the community is defending gear score, which I find genuinely confusing. Uh, but that really is just the community these days. I mean, they even defend bots and GDKPs, so, you know. Gear score is just a plague that needs to be vaccinated out. Well, well, why? Okay, tell me what. Tell, tell me why you don't like it. Why, why is it bad? ...of... The World of Warcraft population. It deters new players from gaining access to endgame content because if a pug is asking for a gear score requirement, don't know why I said it in such a weird accent then, a gear score requirement only obtainable from doing the raid itself before you apply for the group, then... Why... Why do players with bad gear deserve a spot in a pug raid? Like, like, why, like... Let me, let me ask you, why do people with better gear need to invite people with bad gear? What if they just want to play play with people with good gear to make sure the run goes smoothly? Because it's like, if you have the gear, probably you've done the raid before. So you know to some extent how the raid goes, right? Um, if you have bad gear, like what I would do is... I would join a guild, I'd make your own guild, I'd make your own groups, I'd make friends, I'd play with those friends, right? You're locking players out with no new gear. Well, you're locking them out of pugs. But pugs are not the only or best way to get gear, right? If I was if I was a new player and I was not a streamer and I had no friends, I would join a guild, I'd join a mediocre guild, I'd do as many heroics as I could every day, and I'd I would I would make my own heroic groups and 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 I would kind of forge my own path and then once i had better gear then you can get invited to pugs if you want yeah like i it, it's 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 not like it's just impossible to progress in this game it's not, how it's not do you even get into the group now this may not be so much the case right now but i guarantee you it will get worse here let me let me let me show you something i'm gonna log in to stay moonkin on Peggle, even on my Warlock, I'm not like, you know, incredibly famous, but let me log into my uh, Druid where really I'm not famous at all. And I'm going to try to make a heroic group, okay? I'm going to be kind of a dickhead because I'm going to I'm going to leave it immediately. I am going to on my Boomkin, who is like relatively anonymous, I guess. I'm going to make a heroic group right now. And by the way, if you if you get your full heroic bis, you're you're going to be at like 3.8k, 3.7k gear score which is good enough for every for every pug, okay? You're good enough for a pug. Okay, I'm going to start a timer here. Hold up. How fast can I, on my anonymous druid, make a heroic group? Get a tank healer and two DPS. Stopwatch, go. Dungeon finder. Okay, dungeons. I'm going to do all the heroics. That's fine by me. I'm not saving any of them. Um, 
I'm going to invite this tank. I'm going to invite this healer. I'm going to invite this DPS, this DPS, uh, DPS, DPS. And time, 22 seconds. It, it took me 22 seconds to make a heroic group on my boomkin, right? Uh, have fun, uh, doing heroics. Uh, okay, goodbye. So, so, so I'm sitting here like, like, bro, I don't even know their gear score, but they're, they're a hunt, they're good enough to do heroics, and if you do heroics, you can, you can get to fucking, <laughs> wow, yeah, sorry. If you do heroics, you can get to 3.8k gear score, which is good to do every raid in the game right now. So, I'm sitting here like, I'm actually, I'm actually thinking like, why are these people even sitting here at all? Like, just do what I did. Bro, there's like fifth there's like there's like fifteen tanks, there's a bunch of healers and a bunch of DPS. Motherfuckers, just invite each other. Why are you sitting there hoping someone else does it? Mother just start inviting people. What the fuck? I don't know. Anyway. Uh <laughs> it's it's not hard. The point is it's not hard. I think people I think this I think this is human nature, and it's not just in World of Warcraft, it's in real life also. Human nature is such that they would rather wait for other people to accommodate their experience or their success or their growth than just pioneer their own success or experience or growth. This is like life advice, okay? Real life, human, adult life advice. If you're willing to like be the catalyst of your own success, you're going you're gonna to be fine, right? But if you're sitting around waiting all day for someone else to give you an opportunity or do shit, then you're going you're, to then you're, then you're be a loser, okay? So anyway, the point is, go make your own heroic group. It's not that big of a deal. Go make your own raid. Bro, we could do the same experiment. I, I bet you right now, I bet I can make a Nax 10 or 25-man raid within five minutes. Now, if we wanted it to be a good raid, I'd have to start doing... Uh, <laughs> If I wanted to be a good raid, I would I would check people's Warcraft logs, but I could get 10 people in a raid group and be inside of next 10 within 5 minutes. 100%. 100%. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. And there was no gear score involved there at all. Now, there was going to be one guy in the comment section about to say, uh, just join a guild. Yeah, but not uh, everyone has the time to commit to a guild schedule and prefer to just play the game more casually, join a guild as a social, and then pug it now and again. Or... Okay, so you have a very specific set of life circumstances which precludes you from joining a guild, which is how most people play the game. And so as such, you expect everyone to cater their own expectations for gear score or gear or skill to accommodate your experience because you because of your unique experience or your unique like yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'll join organized pugs and things like that mm. when I can, but off all of these pugs are asking for a gear score requirement. You, you could use the same exact logic as like, I don't have time to farm gold. I don't have the schedule to farm gold, so I'm going to advocate for WoW token. It's the exact same argument. Like, I expect the game or other people in the game to cater to my life schedule, and that's why I'm going to push for certain changes or certain deviations from how the game was played because of this. So yeah, so, I, so here's my thing. I don't have time to farm gold. We, should, we need WoW token. We need to get a WoW token in this game. ASAP, boys. And then... You're not going to be able to get into <clears throat> groups in the first place. Sometimes you do miss your guild raid night due to IRL reasons, and then you have to pug the raid instead, but you can't because you don't have enough gear score. Because some absolute donkey. Gear score is a deviation. No, it's not. Gear score was popular from day one of Wrath back in the day. In fact, there were add ons. There was another one in, 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 in TBC in 2007 that was similar to gear score that never worked very well because TBC itemization is all fucked up compared to Wrath, but. Like this, the gear score was. This is not something new to classic wrath, right? This is an old thing. It's an old thing. I used to have a six k gear score and ICC patch, and I would AFK in front of the bank and fucking Dalaran, and people would look at me, and I would feel like a champion because I had my, I had my six k gear score. I had ICC gear. I was wearing wrathful PVP gear, and my gear score number was red. And I was like, yeah, bitch, I got good gear. Yeah, inspect me, pussy. Yeah, yeah. Right click my name, inspect me. I know my gear is good and I know you're jealous too. That was me back in the day. He's requiring yep. you to have a 4K Hi, gear score for a NAC 25 man Ooh. run. And at the end of the day, if you really want Ooh. to be careful on who you invite to a group, there's this website that has existed for many years called Warcraft Logs and you can just inspect people. And everyone lies about their gear score anyway, like, how can you be absolutely sure when someone says their gear score is a certain amount, but it actually is that amount? What do you mean, bro? You, d you just hover over them. 
Like I can, I can here. Can I, can I invite someone random to my party? I think I can do it with party frames also. Yo, scan, join my party, bro. If I, if I hover over his name, oh no, I'm not, I'm not within radius. Okay, so I need, I need to be within like visual proximity of him in order to get his gear score. No, here's, 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 here's my, here's my rule set for making a pug. Okay, like if I'm, if I'm, and we do this a lot. I've done this a lot. So I, I've become, I've become proficient at putting together pugs. Here's my criteria, okay? First off, you need to be the right class, okay? We're looking for the class slash spec. Second off, what I will do is look at your, now I'll look at your gear score. And then third off, if you have a decent gear score, then I'll look at your Warcraft logs. So it's like, are you the man for the job? Do you have decent gear? Then I'll take the time to look up your Warcraft logs. Because we're taking up Warcraft logs, it, it takes me 30, 45 seconds to do that. I don't have all day. So like I know I know I know by default if you don't have decent gear, then you're probably not gonna probably not gonna make the cut. Sorry. So So really I like gear score because it allows me to gatekeep even harder. And I love gatekeeping. It's my favorite hobby. I'm looking to I'm standing by the gate. I'm keeping the gate. I'm the number I'm the world's number one gatekeeper. I love it. I'm the I'm the gatekeeper. Yeah, you need to be six. You need to be six foot seven. You have to have at least uh, you need to be at least two hundred and seventy five pounds with at at most four percent body fat. You need to have at least a fifteen inch dick or a fifteen inch clit. Either way, it's all good because I don't want to be gender discriminatory. So either way, and you're in. It's that easy. You're in. It's basically just the yeah. most pointless thing in World of Warcraft. Yep. If I wanted to make a Giga Chad group, I'd just be checking people on Warcraft logs and inspecting them to make sure they definitely have all the gear that is coming up on Warcraft logs. It's that simple. And then you can make the distinction that, hmm, yeah, this guy has worse gear than many other people in the raid, but he has much better logs, so he's probably going to pull his weight. You know what I'll do? Here's, here's, here's what I'll do. I'll be checking Paris's by item level. Okay, so this so this Boomkin, Stay Moonkin tries to join my raid. And he's like, okay, he's parsing okay. It's pretty good, right? He's in the top, um, you know, 13% of Boomkins. But what if he has really good gear and he's not performing good for his gear? Or what if he has really bad gear and he's performing very well for his gear? So let's toggle by eye level. I think a lot of people don't know about this. You can see, okay, so for his eye level... For the gear this druid has, he's actually fucking killing it. So if you look for, for his eye level, he's in the top 5%. For total boomkins, he's top 13, but with for the gear this guy has, he's owning. He's fucking owning. So this is a guy I'd like to I like to invite. I'm gonna I'm gonna invite this guy, stay moonkin, to the to the run. <sighs> Kathy just walked by me with pizza. There is pizza in the kitchen, so I'm gonna eat pizza while reacting to this video. Pizza party! Thursday afternoon pizza party. It's that simple. And then you can make the distinction that, hmm, yeah, this guy has worse gear than many other people in the raid, but he has much better logs, so he's probably going to pull his... Well, you need to... I, I would look at logs by eye level. I'd look at his eye level. That's what matters. I look at his eye level logs. Wait. Yeah. And then you'd be able to make a group of actual good players, which are actually going to pull the... How do you do that? Once again, the eye level button is right here. This one. Toggle ranking by eye level. Boom. Boom, is how you do that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good tool. I think a lot of people don't know about that. ...away and get the raid done, rather than just geared players. <clears throat> because these days, people can just get geared by swiping their credit card and going to a GDKP. So you may think that, yeah, gear score is... Wait a minute, hold up. Wait a minute, dude. Wait just a minute. Let's use myself as an example here. If I have this eye level, and overall, for all the Boomkins, I'm doing 87.4... But then I adjust it for my eye level, and I'm doing 95.6. Isn't that a pretty good argument that eye level matters? That maybe gear score... So gear score is an expression of eye level. Does Isn't that a pretty good argument that gear score and eye level actually matters? Huh. It's a good thing, because it means that you're always bringing geared people to a group, but it's probably going to end up a worse thing. Overall, it's a bad thing for people who are gearing up their alts and very bad for new players, which is a very bad thing for Classic WoW because we want a steady flow of new players throughout the expansion. And the community is literally discouraging people from playing the game. Now, this is a genuine community-made issue. No, no. What I am discouraging 
is fresh players that have bad gear or that probably don't know what they're doing from expecting to be carried by people with good gear. And by the way, I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. Like if you're new to the game and you have bad gear, you cannot reasonably expect to get carried by people with good gear. Sorry. And there are tons of avenues to get gear that you can that you can work down. But yeah, no, if you're a fresh 80, you cannot expect it to get invited to a next 25 if you have terrible gear. That's that's absurd. No. Shoot, Blizzard isn't making this issue. <clears throat> you could argue that we are by not having average item level in a game. But you get my point. Next it's a 15-year-old game, so it'd be good to carry a new player. So it's not about the difficulty of the content, but most people playing the game, they would like to get achievements that are performance-based. They'd like to maybe parse on their own, which is dependent on the overall quality of the player in your raid. If you have a couple people in your raid that are doing bad DPS because they have bad gear, that's going to impact your performance. That's going to preclude you from getting certain achievements, and that's ruining their fun. You cannot blame people for wanting to play with other people that are on their level or above because it's going to help them perform better and help them get the achievements that they're trying to get. And also, people don't want to sit in next Ramus for six hours. What if they just want to have a two and a half hour next run and not get stuck in there for five hours with pugs because they have bad gear? Is that is that unfair? No, it's a totally fair request. Of course it is. Next, let's talk about Wintergraph. So when I wrote this script, I think I laughed out loud for about 30 seconds long when I, when I came to this section because Wintergrasp is just such a joke. OG Wintergrasp was a server PvP event, a real MMO social feature in the game where the server actually had to bond together in order to unlock the VOA, in order to unlock boons and loot. It's great MMO design. But Blizzard didn't release it in its original state because then they would have to admit that they've done a real piss poor job at balancing servers for the past three years. If the servers were balanced, Wintergrass could have released properly in the way it was meant to be. I mean, the servers don't need to be balanced. They don't want to spend time in a game they want to play. Totanic, I don't think you actually believe this. I don't, like, this is such a dumb argument. I actually do not think that uh, that you believe this. There's no way you believe this. Gamers, MMO players especially, they like to feel successful. They like to be efficient. They like to perform. They like to pump. Like your your argument is like, bro, you just like you died in a video game, bro. Like whatever, you're still playing the game. Don't you, don't you just like enjoy the game? It was bait. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. It was bait. There's no way that you that anyone feels that way. That's 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 the type of comment you would find on like the Battle.net forums. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like that level of, I got baited. There you go. Balanced. They just have to have a healthy population on both factions. Mm -hmm. I used to play in a Raph Lich King server back in the day with a horde dominant population, but we'd always lose Wintergrass because the alliance were just simply better. There was some proper faction rivalry in the game on that server, which is a great social element that every MMO should have. But with Wintergrass, the way it is now, the opposite faction on your server they basically may as well be non-existent. They're totally invisible. They literally are non-existent. It's not they might as well be non-existent. They literally are non-existent. There was no other solution. Like, I hate to defend Blizzard here, but there was no solution for Wintergrasp. This, I think, actually, we got the best version of Wintergrasp that we probably could have gotten. It's easy to critique what they did, but what else would you do? What else would you do? There was nothing else to do. Unless you want to merge Ferlina and Gehenna's into a 65,000 population mega server with 17 hour long queues for the sake of having winter grasp, then, then what? Now all PVP is instance based and cross server. <clears throat> so the last time we ever got to see any interesting faction interactions was with Classic WoW and the world buff griefing chaos that ensued. Personally, I think it's a shame, but I do understand that a lot of people really just don't care about this stuff. Now, my third concern was that there'd be too many death knights. Now, this depends on who you ask, and it's also different server to server. Here's the real problem, bro. There's too many death knights, and then all of them also suck fucking dick. The odds of finding a good death knight is, like... <clears throat> there are more technologically advanced alien species in the fucking cosmos than there are good good death knight players in classic wrath that is the goddamn truth like i would feel more confident you know finding fucking aliens looking out of my window and finding an alien in a flying saucer waving at me out of the flying saucer window than finding <laughs> logging into classic wrath and finding a good death knight player that is true 
talk about my experience. So on my server, obviously I do play a Ooh. Death Knight. It is basically impossible to get a VOA group as a DPS Death Knight. I can normally only get mm. one as a tank. And the same usually goes for 10-man pugs. Yeah, there is a lot I like of Death Knights. In my guild, I think we have about six Death Knights. <clears throat> but then my friend's guild, who I sometimes pug with, they really struggle to get Death Knights. So most of the time when I join their red group, I'm actually the only Death Knight. I get a lot of messages my, uh, you know, my Twitch chat saying, how on earth are you the only Death Knight in that raid group? Because that is a fairly rare sight. So it is a bit of an issue for a Death Knight to pick up a casual pug right now. But because you can very easily stack multiple Death Knights in your raid due to how powerful they are, it's not been that much of an issue for me when it, obviously in my guild. I don't know. Okay, so we're talking anecdotes i guess okay so i'm gonna let me let me go take a look let me let me have my own like anecdote i guess i am going to make a nax 25 raid and i'm gonna list myself in the uh in the group finder all right this is my new nax 25 raid. how many death knights do we have one two there's actually not a lot of people here because it's a uh, thursday i think most people already did their raids it's weird there's there's two hunters two death knights two rogues one ret that's actually that's a that's a prot we only have hunters Rogues and Death Knights. That is it. That's all there is. That's all there is. But well, I haven't been guildless for a while, so you guys tell me in the comment section, you know, if any guildless Death Knights out there, three, has three, it three. been hard for you to find a guild as a Death Knight? Fourth concern was Lagadan. A laggy, unplayable Dalaran where the game is just stuttering along, like it has been on private servers, because private servers aren't layered, so you have thousands of people sitting around Dalaran. Well, at first I thought Dalaran was laggy, and I thought Blizzard had messed up, but then I realised for some reason the add-on item rack in Questy were lagging my game a lot. And when I disabled that, <clears> yeah, <throat> Dalaran is actually totally fine. Blizzard, Dude, I've decided my next YouTube video is going to be called I Love Gear Score. And I'm going to have, it's going to be an eight minute long video detailing why I actually, and it's not even bait, it's not bait. I'm being serious. It's going to be the I love gear score video, and I can't. It's going to be great. I, you guys can look forward to that. It's going to be. I've actually leveled it pretty well, surprisingly. In fact, every time I get an invite when I'm chilling in Dalaran, I end up layer hopping. So there must be a lot of layers in Dalaran to prevent those lag issues. My fourth concern we can only talk about in a speculative manner because the thing I was concerned about is the long wait for Ordua. I have no idea uh -oh. when Ordua is going to turn up, but my prediction will be at least a month after Dragonblight, which would be quite a long way for Ordua to turn up. Private servers normally get fake. What cinematic is this? Where is this footage from? I don't think I've seen this cinematic before. He's one done in about two months because the raids are very easy. We've already done them before in Classic, so it's nothing new. It's not enough to keep people invested and interested in the game. You know. Well, here's the thing. Ulduar is the hardest raid ever made in the history of World of Warcraft, and especially the hard modes. So, if you're bored of Next Ramus, Ulduar is going to own you. You're going to get fucking owned and dominated by Ulduar. Ulduar is incredibly hard. If you're like, if you're like, a, so pretty much, if you're if you're parsing below ninety five on Warcraft logs, you will not kill a single Ulduar boss. Old War is exclusively relegated for the top 5% of gamers, and even then, you're going to struggle. Old War is rough, dude. Old War is hard. hard. People get burned out That's of true. Phase 1 very, very quickly, yep. and many people already are, let's be honest. But honestly, I think the bigger concern could be Dragonblight. True. I mean, it's early days, and it's Blizzard we're talking about here, but mm -hmm. it does look like a fairly good expansion, and they've introduced <laughs> a number of good features to encourage players to return to the game, or to swap from Wrath Lich King Classic when they can't be bothered waiting for Ordua to turn up. Like, for instance, the experience buff and character boosts and just giving everyone Shadowlands for free. And I think, didn't everyone get a... You probably have to correct me. I don't eat the crust. Bro, why would I eat the crust? It's not delicious and it's nothing but carbs. There's a reason why I'm not fat, because I'm not eating pizza crust. Eat the crust, you're fat. Don't eat the crust, you're not fat. It is literally that simple. Crust is bad, you don't want it. No. On this in the comment section, I'm pretty sure no. everyone got a character boost no. for free also. It's not good for you. Or less fat is just Blizzard being nice to me, which <laughs> it probably isn't. I mean, if you look at surveys done, at least a quarter of current Wrath of Lich King players will go and play Dragonblade, but obviously whether they make it their main game instead of playing Wrath of Lich King is debatable. <sighs>
Okay, I just had an amazing idea, but I can't tell you guys what it is. I will be playing Dragonflight for one day, and I will have a costume. I'm going to have a cosplay, so that's what I've decided just now. That's my new decision. That's my new angle. It's the only way. I think a combined threat of <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's going to be good. This will be good. I'm going to look like I'm going to a fucking RuPaul drag show, okay? It's going to... Ah, uh, slash dragon. RuPaul meets dragon. That's my... It's going to be good. Resulting in a bigger drop-off... Yep. Of players than we expected, but then again, it is early days. Rathlich King Classic does have a strong player base, much larger than I actually thought it would be. Most people have raided in Rathlich King, and they are thoroughly enjoying it, and you can see that by the numbers, because now there's more Warcraft logs for Phase 1 in Rathlich King than there was in the most recent raid of Shadowlands. This doesn't mean that more people are playing Wrath Classic than Retail because there's a lot of other stuff to do on Retail than doing raids. And anyway, it's impossible to get an accurate answer unless you literally work for- Is that a- is that half pirate, half dragon? Impossible to get an accurate answer unless Holy you shit. literally work for Blizzard. But nonetheless, it is a big player base, and if you look at the success of Wrath Lich King Classic private servers, it very likely will maintain a strong player base for the whole expansion. Yeah, no Although doubt. Although Dragonblood no turns out to be the best thing since sliced bread, or Ashes of Creation actually comes out before 2036. It won't. Both are very unlikely events in my... I look forward, man, like, I can't even wait. I look forward to playing Ashes of Creation launch with my grandchildren. My grandchildren will be, like, probably teenagers by then. They'll be 14, 15, and, you know, I'll be, like, uh, 70, and... Uh, uh, we're, we're gonna play it together. It's gonna be great. I actually can't wait. My humble opinion. Before we finish, guys, be sure to check out my second channel. I have Oblivion mod lists over there, and I have a little video about how you can actually play Fable 2 on your PC. In the future, I'm gonna make retrospective long review videos of some of my favorite games that are not related to World of Warcraft, so... Please subscribe if you're interested in that kind of thing. It really helps out. That was good. Thank you, Metagoblin. And subs. Anyway, my name is Metagoblin. Until the next video. Ciao. What game is that? I like these. Oh, this is Oblivion. I've never played any of these old, uh, really any of the Elder Scrolls games. Crazy.